everybody. Welcome. Uh, apologize. Uh, we missed about 10 minutes of the session, so anyway, I can, uh, I can provide that later to them. <laughs> I'm not used to this stuff, so. Um, anyway, so let's see here what we have next. If I can just figure out where my mouse is, that will help. There we go. I think that's it for the tools. Uh, this one here is just uh, wanted to mention that that's a tool that we'll use to kind of inst install all of our dependencies, all of our gems. So le let me quickly jump into the code so we can um, uh, start building this. Uh, I want to warn you that uh, I did run into some issues as I was rehearsing for this. So run into a lot of errors. I have it working, but if we do run into those errors again, I kind of I have a the chicken already built, uh, already cooked in the oven. So um, you know we can just jump to that. Uh, what happens is that uh, a lot of the things that we do require some Ruby gems. And obviously, if you want to install Ruby gems, you need to have Ruby installed. And so and if you're not running a Mac, you need to you know, uh, have the Ruby installer uh, downloaded and installed, so you'll be able to install uh, Ruby. I'm not going to go into details about all the gems that you need to be installed. Uh, the Omega documentation is very well specifically about uh, you know, the tools that you need, how you go about installing all the dependencies. We, we are going to be installing some of those tools, but not uh, the entire environment. Uh, obviously, I already have most of it uh, installed, but we're going to be, uh, first of all, downloading uh, Omega through Drosh, creating a sub-theme using Drosh, and from there, we're going to go and install the, uh, some of the gems that our, our theme will need, and then we'll start writing our SAS code. Any questions, we jump into that. Okay. So, uh, let me see where I am here. So, I already have uh, Omega downloaded. I mean, this, you know, no, no big deal. You go download Omega, whether you want to go through the browser or Drush, uh, you download it. So, it's already downloaded. And what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm going to create a new sub-theme. And this is the sub-theme that we're going to be using to create a new website. Omega, uh, on its own, is just a base theme. And that's what provides all those uh, tools and, you know, cross-browser compatibility, uh, HTML5 support, CSS3 support, uh, JavaScript support, all of those things are already part of the base theme. So we're going to create a new uh, sub-theme for our new website. So I'm just quickly going to do Drush. And before, before I do this, um, there's a specific version of Drush that you need if you want to run these Omega-specific commands. Uh, I think it has to be version 5 or higher. And you can... Um, you can find which version you're using if you simply enter that command. That'll tell you. So if you if you have version five or higher, I think you'll be in good shape. The other way you can find out whether your version of Drush allows you to run these Omega specific commands is if you type Drush help uh, filter Omega, I believe it is. So if you see those commands there. Those are the commands that Omega offers for you to do some of the tasks that we'll be doing today. The one specifically that we're going to focus on today are the last one, which is the Omega Wizard. That will walk us through the process of creating our sub theme. And then we also have Omega Guard. That's the, the command that we'll be using to monitor our SAS changes and compile our CSS. You can also use, you know, Compass Watch or Bundle Exec Compass Watch. But this specifically uh, Omega command is what allows us to do the same thing. And it does a few other things. Uh, among those are uh, it turns on uh, live reload, so your browser automatically refreshes every time you, you, uh, you save a change in SAS, so you don't, have, you don't have to go back and refresh your browser. So that's kind of a nice advantage to have uh, for doing that. So, so we're good there. So let me create my... Uh, uh, So the first thing is asking us what is the our theme name, and this is our human readable name. So we can say um, readable camp right. The next one is the machine readable name. I already have a theme called Drupal Camp LA, so I'm gonna call this just uh, uh, just 
just call it something else just so it doesn't conflict with that. And finally, well, not finally, but next it's asking us which uh, is going to be our, our, our base theme to use to build this sub theme. And obviously we want Omega, so that'll be number three. And choose uh, start a kit for your uh, new theme. Uh, we want to use the default. The destination is going to be our default destination, which just cites all themes. So we don't need to change that. Unless you wish to change it to something else, you could. Just type that in. But in this case, we're just going to press enter. Do you want to keep the starter kit readme files? Uh, in this case, we don't need those, so I'm going to say no. Do you want to enable your theme? Uh, no, I'm not going to enable it now. Well, let me, let me enable it. No, I'm not going to enable it. Uh, I'll tell you why next. Uh, because I'm going to be playing with the other team instead, not this one. So, And then this one here, because we're dealing with SAS and obviously we're dealing with HTML5 website, Omega allows us to download some really cool you know, uh, libraries, help, helpful libraries like uh, HTML5 Shift and Select, Selective Visor and a few other uh, libraries that are essential for building a, a responsive and HTML5 compliant website. So I'm going to say yes, I want to download those. If you create your sub theme without Drush, you're not going to have these tools available to you. You, would have, you need to download them yourself by hand. And so just keep that in mind. So an advantage of doing it with Drush is that it allows you to download those tools all for you. So when your sub theme is complete, all your tools are already available to you. And you'll see those in a minute. I'll go through those uh, tools in a minute. So as you can see there, we have HTML5 ship, we have respond.js. You now if you want to make Internet Explorer it, uh, understand media queries, which, never mind, Internet Explorer. Uh, but, um, and a few other libraries. So, so that's what the things did. So our, our sub theme is ready. And if I, you know, I'm going to turn on mirroring. I, I was trying not to do it, but um, this is not working for me. Let me turn on mirroring real quick. This is much better. Uh, so we have that, and I'm going to show you what just happened here. We have this is our site that we're going to be working with. If I go to sites, all themes. Uh, here's our new sub theme. Here's our Omega base theme, and and this is everything that was uh, put in place there. Before we can use our theme, before we can start writing code, we need to go into our sub theme, and we need to. I installed some Ruby gems, and those Ruby gems are specifically to a theme, and they are needed before we can actually start writing our code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to our, my editor, and this is the site that um, let me actually bring up this new theme that we just created. This is the theme that we just created, right? And I'll leave that for there for now. But let me finish up with this here. So we are there. So that's, I'm going into my new sub theme directory, and what you'll see here is a few things happening here. What's happening is if I uh, do a, a direct listing here, you see this gem file here. This gem file is basically it's got a lot of the uh, requirements for our sub theme, and uh, we need to install a lot of those gems. Those are mainly their Ruby, uh, Ruby gems that we need to install before we can use our sub theme. Without those uh, Ruby gems, we won't be able to actually compile our SAS because it's going to complain that we don't have the necessary Ruby uh, files installed. Let me quickly show you what that, what that looks like um, if we look at the gem file. So this is all those gems that I was talking about. So in order for us to be able to take advantage of our, our new sub theme, we need to be able to make sure that all of this is installed on our system. Now I did have some issues with my environment earlier and uh, a lot of this uh, gave me some errors because of the configuration that I have. However, I do have another sub theme that I just saw there working. But I'm going to go through the process, uh, and once I get stuck, then I'll jump into to the other sub theme that I already have ready to go. So the first thing I want to do is when you come into your theme uh, here, 
is the first thing you want to do is, for the most part, you, you you will think that you want to do that one command that I told you earlier, which is Josh Omega uh, Guard, and this should start watching for our SAS changes here. This obviously is not going to work if I choose. It's asking now which which is the base theme that you or which is the sub theme that you want to watch for changes. Uh, we want to select. Um, Number two, I remember that because I wrote the Los Angeles specifically. And so it's saying you don't have the uh, uh, the right version of Bundler. Bundler is uh, one of the tabs that you saw earlier. Bundler is, is a way for managing your gems, right? So uh, the nice thing about Bundler is that your Ruby gems are specifically to the project that you're working on. So you don't you can set them up lo lo globally, but it's nice because you can have multiple type of projects working on your site with different versions of the Ruby gems that you're working on. So in this case, I would normally install, you know, the bundler uh, gem if I if I wanted. Uh, obviously, I don't. I'm not going to do that. Uh, the next thing about the gem file is I want to be able to run through the installation of all those gems that you saw listed there on the gem file. And the way to do that is to do uh, bundle install. All of this is, by the way, on the Omega Four documentation. So if you're not getting all of this, the specifics of all these commands, it's all nicely organized in the Omega documentation. So I know there's a lot of information and we need to go quickly. So by doing bundle install, uh, it's probably going to complain because obviously I need to have the right version of bundler first installed. So I can actually do this. Um, oh. So bundlers install um, and and now I can run the other command. Now I can do bundle install and this is what goes through my gem file and looks at all those gems that are listed on my gem file and make sure that all those gems are installed for this particular theme, just this one theme, not your entire system but just this one theme. Green is good obviously. <laughs> um, so we'll just uh, let that, and you'll see some breakpoint, for example, you see SAS, version SAS there, um, a few other things. Uh, so based on how many gems are specified on that gem file, uh, that's how many of those need to be installed on your system. And so we'll just uh, wait uh, a few more minutes for this. Bless you. So while that's going on, I'm going to jump into another tab, and uh, let me see where I am here. Go back one level. Um, jump into that and get that ready. So it's telling me that everything went well. So now I have pretty much my environment ready to go, technically. Um, and at this point now, I can start setting up my... Uh, uh, Omega to watch for SAS changes. So I, as I start writing my SAS, every time I save those changes, all those changes are saved into CSS, compiled into CSS. So the command to do that is uh, drush Omega guard. Uh, you can also use, um, uh, you can use a simple compass watch as well. Or you can even also use bundle exec compass watch. These are all different and they do slightly different things, but the ultimate goal is that they're watching for changes, SAS changes. Uh, the one I'm trying to use is going to be just the default uh, drush omega guard because that's the, the command specifically for omega. And it's asking me which is your, the sub theme that you want to be watching for changes. It's number two. And here's the, the errors that I was talking about. So um, we're going to leave this sub theme alone, and I'm going to jump into the one that I know works because I fixed uh, those errors already here, um, and I'm going to execute that command. And this time I'm going to choose one. Yeah, well, grant is, is, 
it's a whole you know scheduling tool is a, a whole uh, utility that allows you to run ma many tasks and you can combine let's say this one task along with other ones into one through uh, grunt right so um, grunt I would I would think it has a, a bigger advantage because you can combine all those tasks into one this one is just doing one thing this is just watching for SAS changes nothing else at this point that's it it's just so you can compile into CSS yeah good question so number one and here so here we're ready basically what this is telling us is now um, Omega or Compass is now watching for changes we're ready to go as soon as we start making SAS changes writing our SAS code things will start happening here so I'm going to uh, close this sub theme and here's the theme that, that we're dealing with here before I start writing any code, I want to go over real quickly about some of these files that you see here because there's a lot of files. This is just our sub-theme that we created. And as you can see, there's quite a few files here. I want to focus on the SAS folder because this is what I was talking about before is the SMAX terminology, the SMAX approach of writing uh, code, SAS specifically, is that you break things down into sections, into components. So you can address things individually versus compiling everything into one single style sheet. And uh, there is many, uh, there's, if you read the Smacks book, it's actually, you can, I think you can download it for free. Uh, it tells you what uh, the, the naming conventions should be for your elements, like as far as your markup. And Drupal, especially, specifically Omega 4, is already using those naming conventions. You will see uh, CSS classes for our content areas that start with the letter L, like L content or L... Uh, sidebar and the L stands for layout and that's what the things that you will see uh, on this max book as far as naming conventions for your components so if we go under uh, SAS uh, normally you will not see anything here I just created these two partials and partials are simply just like a, a regular style sheet that starts with an underscore for the name and the advantage of using partial is that they are not compiled into individual CSS files. So if, you, if I create a, this style, these partials that you see here, the breakpoints and grid, those will not be compiled into breakpoint.css and grid.css. What, what will happen is through the use of globbing, which is one of the SAS libraries also, as those two uh, partials will be com compiled into a single CSS file, which will be this one here. Show you here. This one here. Whatever your theme name is, it'll be your theme name that styles that SCSS. So all the partials that you write, however many there are, will be compiled into this one single style sheet here. One one style sheet. And what we're doing here is we're importing some third party libraries, external libraries. In this case, we're importing uh, Compass, we're importing Breakpoint, and Singularity. We need those three things to do what we need to do here. Compass obviously will allow us to take advantage of a lot of uh, CSS3 uh, properties that we can use uh, and many other uh, Compass related uh, mixings that we can use, you know, like clear fix, floats, and things like that. So going back to uh, the structure of our uh, SAS here, so we have abstraction uh, base is where you will find things like, you know, as you can see here, forms, list, media, tables. So each of those uh, Partial is specifically to one thing, and it's nice because if you're looking to say, I need to change the way my tables look, you know you should go into the tables partial, and that's where you find your styles, at least that's where they should be. Um, so just wanted to introduce you to this concept because uh, it, it could be a little uncomfortable at first when we are taught to write as much as we can in one single style sheet, and now we're, they're telling us to write as many partials as you want, at, and ultimately, at the end, everything will be compiled into one style sheet. But it, it, it makes a lot of sense. It makes code a lot more manageable than before. Any questions about uh, the SAS structure uh, in particular? No? Okay. All right. So um, then what you see here, we have uh, Drupal Compile normalize, no query. This one is nice. This is also a SAS extension. And, you know, for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why people would say, why do we need to make Internet Explorer aware of media queries? I mean, it's not like we're building a responsive website and we want it to be responsive on Internet Explorer. If somebody's using Internet Explorer 8 and below, you know, responsive is 
not even it should be out of the question really but the problem is when you introduce the mobile first approach that changes everything and the way that is is when you're developing a website you're running your SaaS with mobile first approach meaning addressing the smallest device first that is all that Internet Explorer is going to see actually because that's the first code you write on your style sheets everything else is written based on breakpoints you know a larger devices tablets or desktops and and those breakpoints are not gonna be seen by Internet Explorer because Internet Explorer doesn't understand media queries so Internet Explorer is simply going to see the code that you wrote for mobile devices and so that's what makes sense to introduce this uh, library here, it's called Node Query, which means uh, what this does when you turn it on, which is by default is on here, as you can see here, it's a uh, breakpoint Node Query is true and Node Query fallback true. What this is doing is it's going to tell Internet Explorer or the system to say, for Internet Explorer, um, don't because Internet Explorer doesn't understand media queries, it's not going to understand our breakpoints. It says, I don't don't render the breakpoints. However, I want you to render what's inside those breakpoints. And so Internet Explorer is going to be able to read the code that you wrote intended for tablets or desktops, even though it won't understand the breakpoints themselves or the media queries. I don't know if that makes sense or not. And, and for the longest time, I had a problem with that because when I first built a website um, uh, using th this method, things look, in Internet Explorer, they look like a mobile site. You know, the navigation was like a mobile navigation. Things look structured just like a navigation. And the reason is because Internet Explorer was only able to see the code that I wrote for small devices, which is the mobile first approach that, that, that is recommended to use when you're building a responsive website. Um, variables. Okay. This is where you would find things for colors, you know, uh, typography and things like that. So very self-explanatory. But I want to show you here, if, if I go up here, you see a CSS folder. This is where things get compiled into. So all those partials that we see here, all of this here, everything, everything is combined into one single style sheet, this one here. What you see here, by the way, don't worry about it. This is just debugging information that Omega offers by default. You can turn that off when you move the system to production. You can turn that off so all that debugging information can be shut down and you, don't, you won't see that at all. Uh, but everything will be compiled into here, and then you see your uh, node query CSS and then a few other CSS files. But this is all you'll be pretty much uploading to the server here, regardless of how many partials you have down here, which is great. So uh, locally, you can manage your code this way, and on the server, you know that you're simply dealing with one style sheet. Okay. And, and that information, by the way, can be configured. You can change it to any way you want. If you go to the... Um, uh, let me find this config.rb file. When did we start? Two thirty, right? Okay. Um, so here is where you set up those parameters. You know, basically here's saying where do you want your CSS to be compiled? Where do you want your SAS to be located? Where are your images located? This file is basically setting up those parameters where you can say you can change this location for CSS and maybe call it style sheets. If you want, you just have to make sure that there's a location with that uh, name there. Uh, but but that's what the, this config.rb file allows you to do there. So um, so we have we're watching for changes now here. You saw that here, and you can see that already something happened here because I just saved that file when I renamed it, the the style sheet folder from CSS. So Compass is already watching for changes here. So let's jump quickly now into writing some SAS so we can start putting together uh, uh, the structure of our site. So let me jump first into our site. Here's our lovely website. Isn't it beautiful? Nice, huh? I just talked about mobile first, and by default, Omega is mobile first. It takes the mobile first approach, meaning that as soon as you start adding content, everything is intended for mobile devices. As you can see, I have done anything at all but my content is already structured as if I'm reading it on a mobile device. In fact, even the, the admin menu has disappeared because that's one of the hacks, uh, one of the hacks files there. There's a, a rule that's, that hides the, the admin menu navigation from mobile devices. You don't need to see it on a mobile device. But So at this point, everything is mobile first. It's, it's already mobile. It's already, our websites are very responsive at this point. Well, not responsive, but it's mobile friendly at this point. We need to make it responsive now. And the way we do that is but start writing some some SAS code. And so I'm going to jump into the abstractions 
uh, location where I already created breakpoint and grid partials. And I'll be using breakpoints to create our media queries and, um, and, and breakpoints and grids to build our grid. So let me first go into the grid. And what I said before is, you know, when you use a third-party framework, it's you pretty much set on some of the rules that they already have for your grid system. You can't change much. Things are changing, obviously, uh, with newer versions of those frameworks, so they're becoming a lot more aware of this. But with, um, with Singularity, you can say, I want my grids to be 12 columns wide. And it doesn't matter how wide my browser is. It's not, it's not aware of the width of your browser at this point. Um, so it'll be, always be 12 columns wide, regardless of what the, the browser width is. And my gutters, I can say I want my gutters to be 20 pixels, but that's not scalable. And that's fixed width. We don't want to deal with fixed width on responsive web design. So by specifying a third, my gutters will always be a third of the width of my columns. So as, as my columns get narrower or wider, then my gutters will also adjust accordingly. So, so that's all I've done with my, my grid at this point. Just set up my grid, and there's a lot more I can do with it, but this is the basics. This is all I need to be able to start creating some rules with, um, uh, with my website. So let me uh, go to the website again, and we can start putting together um, some structure here. The first thing I want to do is I want to enable uh, a little bit of code here that I created uh, just to demonstrate purpose here. I created a block and I called it sidebar, sidebar block and I'll, I'll place it on my second sidebar, on my right side sidebar. And again, because we are dealing with a mobile first website, I don't see it here. I don't see the sidebar content here, even though I just added it to the second sidebar on my website. The reason is because that content is down here. In a mobile first approach, right, the sidebar content always dropped to the bottom of the main content. And so Omega is already doing that for us automatically out of the box. So we don't, you don't even have to worry about doing that. The, 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 the concept here is that mobile first is, is addressing that for you. And your job is to modify your code for bigger devices. That's the main thing. And that's going back to the, the Internet Explorer only sees the code for small devices. It's because everything that is done at this point is only for small devices. But, so let's start doing that. Let's start uh, changing our, our uh, layout. I want to move that sidebar to the right where, it, where I intended it to be. And I can do that if I go into my uh, grid, right? Uh, and let's inspect our content here. I'm going to grab a couple of classes. I already know, but I want to show you um, those classes that we were talking about here. Um, so here is our... There we go page. Here's the, the container for the entire website here. And you can see the class is L page. This is what I was talking about, this max terminology, is that L stands for layout. And because the page container is related to the layout of our, of our website, it's using the prefix of L. So that's our layout. And so I can start writing a rule for that, for the page, where I can say, um, the L page class, I want it, in this, my case, I don't want the, my, my website to expand 100% of the width of my browser. I want it to be a little bit narrower. So I'm saying 100% of, um, of the browser width, regardless of what, how wide the browser is. And I want to center it in the middle. So I'm saving that. And as I go to my code, see how Compass is watching for all those changes and it's writing things for me. It's compiling the CSS. If I go to the site and refresh, you can see that my, my website is now center in the middle. It's 90% of the width of my browser. As I resize my browser, it remains 90%. Remember, uh, as in responsive web design, we, we use percentages. We don't want to use pixels for, for, for dimensions. So I keep resizing, and my site remains at 90%. So it's proportional of the width of the browser. So the next thing I want to do is I want to grab a couple other classes. I want to grab the class for my main content section and my sidebar section. And I want to position them next to each other um, using our grid. And here's the class for our main section. And here's our class somewhere here. Uh, 
let's say main oh here and here's my sidebar um, so let me here's main uh, I'm gonna leave that there for now okay gonna move this down so here we go so um, main uh, see L cont is it main was it main the class for our main content let's see L content yeah L content that's the class that I'm looking at L content and else okay so let me write that real quick here L again the L stands for layout and I'm going to create I'm going to start now using my grid that I just built and say include grid span I'm saying it I want my grid for this particular section to be eight columns wide and I wanted to start on the first column okay that's for the main contents area of my website and then for my uh, sidebar uh, that's a long name so let me grab it real quick here it's this one here for my sidebar um, I wanted to also include the grid that I just built remember my grid is 12 columns wide uh, this time I wanted the sidebar to expand uh, for four columns and to start at the ninth column right because our main content is eight columns wide I want my sidebar to start at the next column it will be the ninth column so start. right yes there now our, our compass is watching for changes it's, it's, it keeps compiling our changes here as we make as we save uh, all of our code let, let me show you something really cool here if I want to change things around I can say I want my main content to still be eight columns wide however I wanted to start at the fifth column this one to still be four columns wide but I wanted to start at the first column I'm going to save this And now things have changed around. The the beauty of this, as I said before, is how much control you have, how things, how you can change things as you go. I I haven't added any classes to my markup. I didn't have to add all those nasty classes to my to my divs. I'm controlling everything through CSS, SAS technically. But I can do this as I go. So as I w deal with breakpoints, if I say, okay, I'm working on this section here, but oh wait a minute, on this section I want things to be reverse order instead. I can do that anytime I want without having to go and change the markup on my site. And on a dynamic website, that is very important because you don't always have access to the markup all the time. So, um, so this, if I resize my browser, this remains that way. You can see that things don't adjust. The reason is because, as I said before, every code that we're writing right now is for, for mobile devices. Unless I give it a breakpoint. How much time do we have? 10 more minutes? Why am I opening this? Okay. If I want things to behave differently based on the device size, then I can start using the breakpoint uh, that I that I I'm going to write right now. So here are my I I just created two new breakpoints, two media queries basically here. I'm saying I want a tablet breakpoint 40 amps and desktop break for 70 m These numbers are just from resizing my browser and calculating where you know, 768 falls under or 960 falls under. So that's what those are. You can very well use pixels also, that's fine. So I have two breakpoints available to me. Uh, if I go back to my grid, I can say here for my, um, I can say include breakpoint. I'm going to wrap both of these for now into um, into one single breakpoint. So now I'm, I'm changing things. I'm saying only if the width of my browser is as wide as a tablet, 40 m, whatever that is in pixels, move things next to each other. Otherwise, things will go back to the default, which is stacked the way they were originally uh, done by Omega. So if I refresh, obviously right now we're good because uh, my browser width is wider than a tablet screen, right? But if I resize my browser, you can see that now things are no longer next to each other. 
you can see my sidebar is back to where it originally was. I'm sorry? It went back to the default, that's correct. That is, yes, it did. Remember, this was the default when we started, first started with this. And now I'm changing things based on, you know, obviously the, the, the requirements of my project or things that I can do. And so, and as I said before, you can do things as you go. I can say something like, um, as an example here, not, maybe not a very good example, but just to show you here. Um, I'm going to write my anchors. Um, Uh, red, but here in tablet, I can say uh, I put two because I think Drupal uses the uh, pseudo class linked for their anchors. Color, um, I don't know, blue. So the blue obviously <laughs> that didn't make much sense. But if I go smaller, you see my links change to red. And so this is what I was talking about: building as you go. You can you can start writing your code obviously first for mobile devices, and when you hit a point where you say, "Wait a minute," on on on, on this one item, I want it to be slightly different uh, on bigger devices. So I can drop in a breakpoint there and change things, and then continue writing my code and 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 and, and doing things that way. So I know it's a lot of information. Uh, I went through a lot and um, probably very confusing, but I just want to introduce you to the tools. It's not intended for you to learn this whole process, but just be aware of the tools that are available to you. Uh, go read about them. Uh, there is a great, great resource that I, where I've pretty much learned all of this, uh, so I'm kind of cheating. If you go to levelaptots.com, they have an entire series on the Omega 4 theme where, go, where they, the guy goes through every single thing that I discovered. And even better, he, he speaks better English too. So, um, and well, uh, I'm not going to argue with you on that. Yeah, so, let me. Um, so, if you just go and search for Omega, um, here I um, I have that thing burned into the screen. I think from looking at it so much. Cause, so I'm not basically what I'm saying is I'm not original. I, I'm I'm just uh, copying here. Did Bob leave? Where's Bob? Anyway, Bob, he's the guy behind the weekly drop. Anybody subscribe to the weekly drop? Yeah, he just he, he left. He's going to be in the uh, next room uh, at 4 o'clock, I think, talking about Drupal 8, building a blog. Highly uh, recommend. I work with him, by the way. We both work at, at uh, Media Current. Great guy. So subscribe to the weekly, weekly drop. He's going to be giving out uh, free T-shirts. So don't leave yet. Though. Um, I'm, I'm not that yet. So anyway, look up uh, for the, uh, this here, the complete guide to Omega 4. Look at this. Each each video is about you know five ten minutes, and I'm unbelievable what, what what this guy does. So he covers everything that I just covered, and and in better detail actually. So uh, any questions before we get out of here um, and go to Bob's session? Mm -hmm. Right, we're, we're all going there. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he just walked by. Um, so any questions uh, about uh, what we just covered? I know there's probably a lot of questions, but uh, Sorry for the confusion. If I confuse you, there, just want to introduce you the power of uh, what you can do with SAS, with Omega, Singularity, and Breakpoint, how you can dynamically change the structure, the layout of your website as you go. So thank you for your time. appreciate it, and uh, enjoy the camp. Question. Um, I understand that uh, Drupal 8 is supposed to be in with regard to the active. Uh, yeah, it's actually going to be responsive out of the box. Yeah. Of, uh, yeah. Um, so, how many of these tools would you still need once you can put Drupal 8 in place? It's hard. No, I haven't uh, done much uh, as far as responsive with this. I haven't done much with Drupal 8, so I'm not sure. I know the, if you looked at the Omega. A project page. They're already uh, working on a version of five for Drupal eight. Okay. So obviously there will be some changes, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, I, I think it's going to be much better. I mean, it can only get better from this point on. <laughs> uh, it's going to be responsive out of the box. 
so that's going to be a good thing. Exactly. Uh, I just so, haven't done much myself with it to, to be able to tell you exactly what, uh, you know, which tools. Now, SAS, Compass, I think those will definitely be used. They'll still be used. Yeah, and probably even Breakpoint and, and, and Singularity because the fact that you still have to build your grid, that's, that's, that's still going to be needed. Right. right? So uh, I don't know the specific how they're going to be different from between that and 777. Yeah, I can, I can really tell you that. Gotcha. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. Um, we have to do that. Um, you want to stop recording? Sure, sure, sure. You want to stop recording? Oh, yes. Thank, Thank you. So